Um, well, thank you very much for everyone that stayed behind. And I know everybody's starving, and I'm the one holding you. But um, I'm very happy to be here. And like as Greg mentioned, I've been wanting to come for several years, so I'm very pleased that I'm actually finally made it. But let me go ahead and get started with my presentation. So let me first tell you who we are and what is the Climate and Clean Air Coalition to reduce short-lived climate pollutants. It's the CCAC is the only global effort that unites governments, civil society, and private sector committed to improving air quality and protecting the climate in the next few decades by reducing short-lived climate pollutants. The coalition was launched in February 2012 to promote the mitigation of these pollutants, and the mandate of the CCAC builds upon several years of scientific research that demonstrate the damages to climate, human health, and agriculture caused by these pollutants. Complementary to mitigating carbon dioxide emissions, the coalition acts as a catalyst to create implement and share immediate solutions addressing near-term climate change to improve people's lives rapidly and to ensure sustainable development for future generations. In 2012, the coalition was, was founded by the government of Bangladesh, Canada, Ghana, Mexico, Sweden, and the United States, along with the United Nations Environment Program, or UN, UN Environment. But now it has over 125 partners, so we have grown quite a lot. So what are these short-lived climate pollutants? I'm not going to go into detail because you can find more information about this on the coalition website, but basically there are four of them, and they are black carbon, methane, tropospheric ozone, and hydrofluorocarbon, sorry, <laughs> it's a long word. And they're very uh, powerful because they actually um, are detrimental to the climate and to the human health, and as, of course to agriculture and ecosystems. So it's very important to minimize, to mitigate these pollutants because if we do that, we avoid global warming. We actually um, avoid premature deaths and also um, avoid crop losses. As well, these pollutants are very important because if we address them, we actually can decrease the level of uh, um, the increase of temperature over into the, to the year 2050. So the fast action to reduce this pollutant, especially methane and black carbon, has the pollution, have potential to slow down the warming expected by 2050 by as much as 0 0.6 Celsius degrees, in addition to making cuts on the carbon dioxide. So the, what the CCAC does is that we, have, uh, we address those pollutants from the different sectors. So we have seven initiatives that are sectoral and basically are addressing the, the pollutants from each sector, and uh, those are the agriculture, bricks, cook stoves and heat stoves, diesel, oil and gas, HFCs, and waste. We also have four cross-cutting initiatives, which is the assessment, finance, uh, uh, supporting national action plans, and urban health. But I'm here to talk about a little bit about city action climate planning. Why is it so important? You know, one of our partners is UN Habitat, and they actually have come up with guiding principles for city climate action planning. And this, they say that the city climate action plan it should be ambitious. We should set goals and implement actions that evolve iteratively towards an ambition, ambition actions. They also should be inclusive, with, you know, have all its stakeholders in mind. They need to be fair, they need to be comprehensive and integrated, they need to be relevant, actionable, evidence-based, transparent and verifiable. I actually posted the, the website of the UN Habitat where you can find more information about these guiding principles and all the different action, um, the different stakeholders that are working towards helping cities come up with the city uh, action climate planning. Actually, uh, C40, which is also one of our partners, also has um, a framework right now to help cities with, uh, with city action planning. So I, I suggest you also look up that, and I think it was relatively launched uh, earlier this year. So I want to go back and tell you a little bit more about what, why waste is so important in the city action plan, especially regarding Africa. And like uh, Hastings from C40 mentioned earlier today, it, it makes up like 25% of the uh, impact on, on the climate. So 
it is very important to have a, a vision for holistic waste management. You know, the environment, the benefits of waste management are from, they will impact climate change, reduce poverty, also help with food and resource security, and also um, with sustainable consumption production. So here we have, you know, it's, 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 we have threefold uh, impacts in the environment, economy, and society. And it's also a very important part of the Agenda 2030. So it's not only uh, important to consider the direct emissions of, weight, of the waste sector. You know, re reduction, reuse, and recycling, three R's, they all displace virgin ma materials and, pro and products in the greenhouse gases emission in the manufacture. So it's very important to take that in, in mind. As well, it's very important to look at food waste because right now we are wasting so much food waste that if we actually avoid it, we can actually reduce the greenhouse emissions by 9%. So across the sector, we can, if we improve all waste management, then we can have a, a reduction across the, across the growth of 15 to 20%. So because I work with the coalition, I have to take into account what are the pollutants from the, uh, from the waste sector. So this, in my case, are methane and black carbon. So from the waste initiative, which is the one I coordinate, it's very important for us to mitigate those pollutants. And we do this by providing a comprehensive package of resources, technical capacity building, and a global network of city to facilitate the design implementation of locally appropriate actions. And that's very important. Actually, we have talked about this yesterday and today where it's very important to look at what cities are doing and how is it that we're not going to just borrow from Europe or from borrow from other areas. We're going to make sure that what we implement is consistent with what's going on in the, in the context of the city. What is the value added of our initiative? Basically, we work directly with cities, which is because it's important because the cities are the ones that are, are handle, have to handle the, the waste. We also have a support from the, all the CCAC partners. I mentioned we have 125 partners all over the world. So, you know, having that support is very important. And we actually mobilize experts from all over the world. That, that's as well because we work with networks like C40, ICLE, and other ones in the world. Then we can actually have access to those experts all, all over the world. So, basically, it is important to reduce the emissions from the waste sector because... There are benefits, there are environmental benefits, there are social and economics. The solutions are very basic. You know, we need to improve waste collection, transportation, and handling. We have to prevent waste burning because waste burning causes black carbon. We need to manage better our organics, you know, that, because the organics give off the methane. And also, if we do have a landfill, it's really good to have a landfill gap capture system. Regarding informal waste settlements, it is a priority to, to make sure that we handle the waste in those, in those um, areas. And like um, Hayson also, also mentioned, and we need to have 100% collection coverage. Uh, and also, it's an environmental uh, priority. We need to make sure that we eliminate open dumping and burning of waste at these sites. And this is also, in, in this information is also, you can find it at the Global Waste Management Outlook, the big one that was um, put together in 2015, and I guess probably it's also addresses in, in the African Af outlook. So the waste management, the waste initiative has a strategy where we work with cities, but we also work with national CAF, the national governments. Why? Because we need enabling policies. We cannot just leave it to the cities to just come up with policies. It has to come from the top. There has to be policies where we have, where the government kind of says, yes, organic management is important. It's important to reduce open burning. All this has to come from above. So we actually work with them with, to do this. We also, also would like to scale up actions. So the actions that are taken by some cities, they can actually be bigger and actually be can duplicated in other uh, cities in the countries. So we have created a toolbox where we have all these tools that cities can use and then they can... Um, put the information and they can get some preliminary results. We also work by in, informing kit networks and forums to catalyze broader action. So this basically shows you uh, the network of our cities across the world. You can see several here in Africa. Um, but 
I also wanted to show you that we work with cities, but we also work with the private sector because they are the ones that are going to provide the technology. We work with national governments, and also, very important, we work with national and international NGOs and the academia. I don't, I don't think we have mentioned that too much here, but the academia is a very important source of knowledge, and they actually can help you with some stuff that maybe, you know, you need something like waste characterizations or surveys of, of the community. We have talked about this, the importance of involving the community, of making sure that we know what they need. So right here, um, this is the, the website of the College of, of the Initiative, so if you want to get more information. Um, this last day, I want to show you some of the examples of the cities that we work with. Um, one of them is in Penang, Malaysia, and they are they prioritizing organics, so they're trying to get more organics, diverting organics from their landfill. Well, how are they doing this? They're basically doing what is called uh, the long, getting the long-hanging fruit. What does that mean? It's a, it's a term meaning that you go for the easy stuff. So you get the organics from the market, from um, businesses, from restaurants, from hotels. So that's what they're trying to do. So when I, we share the presentation, there's actually two videos here that I, I suggest you look at so you can learn more information about what they're doing in Penan. Same thing in Viña del Mar. Also, there's one important thing is that they actually did their uh, waste management plan, which is very important for cities to do. Also, they, is another thing that's very important that they're doing in Viñada is the incorporation of the private sector. So they're now they're tendering an aerobic digestion plan to, to do PPP. In Sao Paulo, also working with organic waste, trying to divert as much waste as possible, working a lot with the community and having um, also with the schools, teaching the, the kids the importance of diverting uh, organic waste and doing it in a decentralized manner. In Amman, Jordan, they have uh, prioritized optimizing waste collection. And they also, they wanted some recommendations on how to involve more the private sector and also having training on not just on, um, on organics, uh, but also on the transfer station. It's uh, very important because sometimes if you don't do that right, then you're, you're losing valuable uh, materials. In Rio de Janeiro as well, they're prioritizing organics. They also have a big problem with leachate because it's a tropical city. So they, that's something they're, they're also prioritizing. And also they're making sure that their uh, uh, fleet is green. So making sure that, that, that they're moving away from the older vehicles and having better vehicles to, to collect the waste. In Dar es Salaam, they, we also, also work. There they have actually prioritized what is the household behavior and they did it in awareness raising with them. Our organic, they, we, have, we did it for them an organic waste management strategy, which is also very important. Recommendations on how to improve the Pugu dump site. And then more training on organic waste management and landfilling. This is the networks that we have right now. We have actually worked towards regional because it's important, like we mentioned, we have been mentioned, it's like every region has their differences. So we have one in Latin America, we have done one for Francophone Africa, we're going to do one for Sub-Saharan in South Africa. We have one for India. Anyway, they're all there, so you can see them. This is the cities for Francophone Africa that we have worked with. And lastly, I uh, just wanted to mention one very important aspect of the coalition is that we have this campaign called Breathe Life. And it's basically to raise awareness to, with the citizens of all the pollution that we have. So I, I, I suggest you look at the, uh, at the website, it's Breed Life 3030. And if you want, just join. It's very easy, just have to sign a letter. And then it will, they'll give you all this information that you have here. And that's it. Thank you very much and enjoy your lunch. Thank you.